Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson six, proofs of laws of exponents. So now instead of just saying, oh, this is a law, we're gonna use it, we have to prove it that it's true. So the law of exponents for x, y not equal to zero and all integers a, b, the following holds. So we've already done these in prior lessons. So x to the a times x to the b, when our bases are the same and we're multiplying, we add exponents. It equals x to the a plus b. If we have a variable x to the power of b, and then we put that in parentheses and take it to the power of another number a, then we multiply the power of powers. That's the power rule. And then we get x to the a, b. And then finally, the third rule says that if we have grouping x and y in parentheses to the power of a, the a gets distributed. So we have x to the a times y to the a. OK, facts we will use to prove 11. A, 11 is already known to be true when the integers a and b satisfy a being positive or zero and b being positive or zero. b, x to the negative m, equals 1 over x to the positive m for any whole number m. And the c is the quantity 1 over x to the power of m equals 1 to the m over x to the m, which is 1 over x to the m for any whole number m. So now we're on to exercise 1. It says to show that c, being right here, is implied by equation 5 of lesson 4 when m is positive, and explain why c continues to hold even when m equals zero. Okay, so I brought that in for us, and it says equation five says that for any numbers x and y, when y is not zero, and any positive integer n, the following holds true. x divided by y in parentheses to the power of n equals x to the n divided by y to the n. So now we want to prove this using that. Explain why c continues to hold even when m equals zero. So what we're going to do here is say, if we have, now we're doing C, if we have 1 over x to the power of m, that equals, by the rule, 1 to the m divided by x to the m. And when I simplify that, 1 to any power is 1, and then x to the m is left alone. So that proves that we get from here to here by distributing our powers to the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so there's exercise one. Okay, now we want to use zero. So now we want to see that it's true when m equals zero. So let me change colors for this portion. So if m equals 0, then the left side is, so we're going to get this. We're going to get our 1 over x to the m is going to equal 1 over x to the 0. And that is going to equal 1 because anything to the power of 0 is 1 by definition. Okay. So that takes care of the left side. Now the right side would be, we're talking this now. If I do that side, we start with 1 over x to the m. And we're going to replace m with 0. And we get 1 over x to the 0. And when we do that, we get 1 over x to the 0 is 1. And that 2 is 1. So that proves that this, when, when, x, when m is 0, this side will equal 1, and this side will equal 1. And that proves that plugging in 0 makes this formula true. Okay, now on to 2. Exercise 2 says, show that B is in fact a special case of case 11 by rewriting it as x to the m to the power of negative 1 equals x to the negative 1 times m for any whole number m, so that if b equals m, where m is a whole number and a equals negative 1, then 11 becomes b. 
All right, so first I need to bring in what does B say? So here is B. If we went back, B says x to the negative m equals 1 over x to the m. So the left side, we're going to say x to the negative m is equal to x to the negative 1 times m. Negative 1 times m is negative m. And then this side, we're going to take 1 over x to the m. And we're going to say that that is x to the m. And we're going to take that to the negative 1. That's just flipping this by making that a negative 1. And by definition, x to the m to the negative 1 in less than 5. So therefore, B says exactly that x to the m to the negative 1 equals x to the negative 1. So what they're saying is these two are equal. So all we were doing was proving that these two are equal. So x to the negative 1 times m equals the quantity x to the m to the negative 1. Okay, exercise 3. Show that c is a special case of 11. So first of all, I'm going to bring in c. And c states that the quantity 1 over x to the m equals 1 over x to the m for any whole number m. So what we're going to do first is we're going to simplify this. And what this means is 1 over x to the m equals 1 over x quantity. Oh, wait, I, I just, I don't need to repeat that. It's already there. 1 over x, this is an m. 1 over x to the m equals, to the negative m, equals 1 over x to the m. Okay, 1 over x to the m, quantity, equals 1 over x with the m in the denominator. All right, so this is going to equal, I'm just going to flip the inside here, and that is x to the negative 1. 1 over x is x to the negative 1, and the m is still out here. That's step 1. And then if I take the right side, and I take 1 over x to the m, and I flip that, then I'm going to say that that is going to be x to the negative m by definition of x to the negative m. And this this is going to be equal this is going to be equal to x to the negative 1 times m. So therefore c says that x to the negative 1 to the m right here x to the negative 1 to the m equals x to the negative 1 times m. And that proves the rule here. m and negative 1 are in opposite orders here, but that's okay because multiplication is commutative. Exercise 4. Proof of case 3. Show that when a is negative and b is greater than or equal to 0, x times b to the power of a equals x to the a, b is still valid. So we're going to let a equals c for some positive integer c. That's the key to this. And we're going to show that the left and right side of this are equal. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start out with discussing the left side of this equation right here. And it's x to the b all to the a. So I'm going to write that, x to the b to the power of a. 
and it is going to switch. We're going to let A equal negative C. So that's going to equal X to the B to the power of negative C. So we're replacing a negative C with A. It says let A equal negative C. Here's A. Now it's negative C. And then we're going to solve this. And we're going to get... I'm going to take the reciprocal of this and change this to a positive. So I'm going to flip what's inside, 1 over x to the b. And I'm going to move the power down below. So since I moved the negative c from, think of this as this. So now I'm flipping that fraction, and so the c became positive. Okay? And then that is going to equal... 1 over x to the c times b. I'll just put the c first because a was first. Okay, so that's done on that side. Now I'm going to work the right side, which is this one. Actually, let me keep it in that order. Okay, so now we're going to work x to the AB. So x to the AB is going to get, A is going to be replaced with C. So now I'm going to have x to the negative C times B, which equals x to the negative quantity CB. Okay, I can move the parentheses. That's the associative property x to the negative c times b, and then that's going to come out to be, I'm going to flip this now and get this negative out of here, so this is going to become 1 over x, and then the cb is going to become positive down here. And we got the same results on both sides, therefore it is true. Okay, that is the end of lesson six. Little complicated proofs there. Hopefully it was understandable. If not, see me. And now go do your problem set.